Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's crazy here in all your Greg. And uh, I'm just woke up late today, man. It's the end of the year. This is all I can manage to grow out the whole year. Last day of the year. Last it's uh, December 1st, 2017. And we wanted to come to you, get together, just talk a little bit about New Year's resolutions, planning. Why, why they suck. Yeah, why they suck. Yeah, why, In general. Why, why they're BS. I mean, I engage in planning this time of year because there's some downtime usually. It's a little quieter. Mm -hmm. So I think right. it's, I mean, I think it's good to reflect, but it was much easier for me to plan this year um, because I've done it so wrong in the past, I think. So what's the difference between this year and what you've done in the past? Then? In the past, I've gone in with, oh man, you know, I want to get, I want to get a pool. I want to get a boat. I want to get a car. I want to get a house. I want to get a building. I want to get X number of dollars this year. And I understand that type of motivation. I'm motivated that way a lot. But if you think about it and relate that to, that's the way I've done it in the past. Okay. okay. And what you're are just, our bullet point points then as your year goes? Well, I've done this that. I've taken pictures of them, typed captions, made little booklets out of them, drawn them. You know, that thing, that's important. Okay. Your goal files. That is important. However, really it's about a continual process. I mean, if you think about it, the reason New Year's resolutions are no are BS or not good is because it's you know you're you're annually saying I'm going to throw out these goals. Some of them arbitrary, some of them unrealistic <coughs> that are not followed through with. I mean, how many people quit going to the gym by the end of January? Yeah, right, because they're going to get in shape. Whereas Incorporating that into your lifestyle. What's your life goal? How do you live your life? I don't think that that's you know that's inseparable from how you run a business or how you are in business. Um, if I eat right, then I'm going to be thinner. I'm going to be healthier. If I exercise regularly, I'm going to be healthier. And that needs to be a lifestyle rather than some kind of <coughs> annual goal we throw out there. So that's the commitment. And, right. and you got to check up on yourself more than once a year. So this has got to be a continual process. That's it's a process. That's what you're planning on this year. It's a process. Well, <laughs> that's what my life's become is a process. You know, it's a continual lifestyle, lifetime. Work, leisure, rest, recharge, work, leisure, eat right, exercise, plan. Right. Check back in on your plans. And I understand throwing out annual goals because that's you know that's how we mark the calendar year. But you're continually upgrading those goals as you Yeah, I mean this year there was less solid plan. Less it's more of a flexible plan. It's more of a, a all right, this is trial and error of what we've learned in past in the past. Right. This is our simple plan. I, and I don't want some kind of multi, I don't want to throw down a book and that's my plan. Um, I can't comprehend that. I <laughs> can't either, either. I want a simple goal uh, that I do, you know, that I, that I work on throughout the year. Like expansion and growth, we're going to work on expanding into reciprocal states that make it easy for us to do so. We're not going to push the river. We're going to go through the, go through the flow. Um, so we're going to get in multiple states by, you know, having me apply those bars mm -hmm. and getting accepted. At the end, I think I'm going to take a neighboring state's bar, and I'm going to have three states continually, one after the, you know, connected, and I'm able to do business. In. I'm going to develop those out. That itself, in one year, is a great plan. Just yeah. those three states. Okay? Accepted into one that I'm thinking of. How about accepted into Georgia by motion? Apply and take and pass the South Carolina bar, which I have to take. And then, and then uh, start developing out those states. 
although there's a lot to develop out in this state. So should I even be doing that, right? <clears throat> well, I mean, if you want to expand, which you do. I do. Then... I, have, you, you I certainly, have have a I mean, certainly haven't reached a critical mass in North Carolina. One of your goals was to have, <coughs> excuse me, a office in every city out of 30,000 people, right? That's correct. Now, <laughs> now that's transformed, I'm talking about fluidity, to a nationwide legal financial and trust management program. Whether okay. that is virtual or physical, <laughs> right? Is Amazon in all 50 states? I don't know. I don't know if they're physically in all 50 states. That, I don't think they're physically in every 50. There you go. But they're Would online. Would you say they're nationwide or worldwide world 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 company? company? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Based out of Seattle, but I hear they're moving operations to Atlanta, maybe. Okay. So I've heard. But anyway, um, just tons of opportunity out there. Those simple guiding plans. Working that process, working my networking process that I have down, uh, knocking out you know, my marketing plan, consolidating our systems such as banking and finance and, and those right. things, um, simplifying those, all those should, should equal more efficient and ease of management of my office, expansion capabilities, and much more business than we have this year. Are you setting dates to anything? Like you have to achieve this by this day or that by that day or anything like that? Some of mine are do these things every day. Some of these things are okay. doing once a week. Right. So yes, I have set dates. Okay. And and may need to go back and, 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 and add some dates to some of these things. I mean, it's not a bad idea at all. Um, but a lot of these things we've but see, it's not like we're ending this year, and that's my point, and going into next year. It's we're continuing out some of the items we're working on, right? Like yeah. the Hometown Heroes book. We're, we're not just going to say, okay, we're done. You know, We set the deadline for December 31st. We still have, I did an interview, okay, that we may or may not interview. I did it Thursday, and I'll show you how to do it. And then um, I've got, I think, a couple more interviews scheduled. Should be done this week. Yeah. And then I'm done. And the preface from Evan Thompson. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get those things done. They were, we're not going to drop it right now. So we well, didn't get done. Or right, we're just going to continue on. Right. That's my point is, right. is we had a lot of good things so going third so quarter of last year that need to continue. Mm -hmm. That need to be completed and then incorporated into other things that we're doing this year. So... Yeah. So I think, you know, you got to look at the past. A lot of my planning for the next year is reviewing the past and not trying to throw out resolutions I'm not going to achieve, but think about how can I change my lifestyle to be this way for life or to be a certain way for life. In shape, healthy. <coughs> right. Regimented in my work processes. Well, it's a good point, though. Get my energy high. Get my energy high. With regards to resolutions, you want them to be those <coughs> those things that are amazing to you. Mm -hmm. You want them to be a much higher level than you're normally used to, each, each one. Otherwise, they're just going to be very ordinary. You're not going to feel they're worthy, maybe, subconsciously. I, th I think there's a, a dichotomy there. There's... Okay, and here's where I want to go. I'm going to, I'm going to introduce maybe some new concepts for me okay. that I've learned. Yes, there is setting your goals as high as possible. Okay? Setting the level that you need to achieve as high as possible. Right. However, there's also sustainability. Mm -hmm. How can I keep my energy level up continuously, which requires rest, yeah. It requires discipline to get to bed at night, which I don't have as much as I need. Okay? Which I'm working on, constantly. And it requires patience. So doing the grind every single day, right? Yeah. Doing, putting up content every single day, working with clients every single day, 
getting new business every single day, working with employees every single day. Yeah. Those things every day. And I think there is a progression. And then I think you need to keep raising the bar for yourself, right? <laughs> Looking yeah. to other states. Looking to the nation, you know, geographically, monetarily expanding. But it's those processes, the grind and the patience that gets you there. What about, I think a lot of people set goals and they don't anticipate how much work it's going to take to get there. And that's why, they yeah. And they're not, they don't enjoy the grind. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I and mean, it's easy to say, I'm going to get fit and I'm going to do this and be able to lift this <coughs> amount of weight. But are you going to grind it out of the gym? Yeah, it's not just uh, every day. A few times a month, is it? it's not going to make any difference if you do that. No, I've got to be doing it every other day at least. Sure, regular. So, so it does take a lot of work. And be patient that you're going to get there. I mean, I, I get frustrated all the time because I'm not an overnight success. Because I'm not that. We have to help you, the millionaire, billionaire. If you were an overnight success, how would that? How would that? Change things. I mean, would it improve things for you? Isn't it? I mean, mon monetarily, it does. You got more money. Well, money, sure. But, but I don't think you have the wisdom that comes with it of what to do with it. Yeah, I mean, and it's not as valuable to you. <coughs> Let's face it, probably blow it on stupid things. The ones who are overnight successes don't have that, that rate of failure. And failure is really where we. We make our, we learn. That's that's the main place. I mean, you look at any entrepreneur who's made it big; they've all failed at some point. Let's have again and again and again. And, and I think at some at time. some point, Bob Demers, who is one of my mentors and my a business coach, I work with you. We were talking about yesterday. Yesterday, we were talking about. Operating without fear. Yeah. I mean, failure is what removes fear. Yeah, I mean, that's true. What if you, I'll pose the question to me yesterday, what if you were able to make decisions quickly and without fear? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Just take your call. <coughs> So decisions without fear. Right. If I could just make all decisions I mean, without fear. And if, you could, if you could make decisions without fear, literally the world would be your eyesight. You could do anything. And you just got to decide to, anything. to go down that path. And, and, and I think, think people don't realize that. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, really, it doesn't matter if you have zero dollars, if you owe a million bucks to somebody and you got right. no money, you're never less than negative. It doesn't matter if you are a billionaire. Right. Really, the only thing that separates those people, I think, is the ability to make decisions without fear. Because then all your decisions are going to be made quickly. Now that doesn't mean that you don't that you make stupid decisions. No. But you're going to be able to take advantage of more opportunities because you're going to remove the fear of what if this goes wrong? Or what if this or what if I'm embarrassed? Or what if somebody challenges me? Or what, what is my mom going to think? What are my friends going to think? What's my wife going to think? It does bring up the point of my husband going to think. That most decisions that you see in business <coughs> are fear based. And most decisions you, don't, you see you don't, not don't just down business. the path. I don't think them. you can separate business in personal life. Most well, decisions yeah, that's, are fear based. Yeah, that's a good point. Most decisions I think are fear based. So the ones you don't do, usually you don't do them, not because they might not be a great. How do you thing, remove fear? Because you let it go. I mean, the the whole okay. the whole concept of of releasing stuff, right? And, and I think failure. I think failure eliminates fear. That's that's how I think those two tie well, together for me. As what did you learn from it? What do I learn? Yeah, let's say I failed. So what do I learn? What do you learn after you get? You let's say you're in a bar. Let's say you're in a bar fight. Fight you get him. You learn. You learn how, how not to do it. Right. 
Well, it's just not that bad. That's my thing. You know, if I get in a fight and I get punched in the face, I mean, I, it's not great. But at some point, you're like, man, you know, it wasn't too bad. You know, that was okay. I, I, I didn't die. You know, I'm fine. Right? And that's the same thing if you lose money or, you, you know, you fail at a or maybe, for instance, one of my marketing plans last year was, I think, less than successful in the area I wanted it to be successful at. But I was left with these other parts of that plan, these resources that we had made, these videos we had made. And now I'm leveraging those in different ways. I guarantee it will recoup our return on investment, okay? Or already have. And that's something I'm going to be able to use for the next several years. But the way I wanted to leverage them, which was TV advertising, was an absolute dud. Fell flat. Dud. Waste of my money. So what did I learn? Well, it wasn't that bad. I learned that I can change lands midstream. I can even use the fruits of my labor that result in failure. And you know, how many things that have I planned that turn out exactly like I wanted them to be? None of them. I always have to change midstream and make the best out of it. And, I, and you learn as you go along. Now, I'm not going to wait until December 31st of 2018 to do it. I'm going to change constantly, right? And update and adapt. Yes. So your, really, your expectations. I mean, the quarterback fair. doesn't call the plays on one day. But your expectations then of fear are far greater than the fear itself. I mean, it's it, or far greater than yeah, the result of that quote. Well, you know, all, you, all we have to fear is fear itself. Yeah. Who's that? Is that Roosevelt? Roosevelt. Yeah, it's just Roosevelt. It's Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a very true quote. I mean, the, the fear, you know, you'd rather not fail and everything be perfect, but then, number one, it wouldn't be as fun in the end. Number two, um, if you're you are going to adapt and change and overcome failure. And you're going to avoid, there is no, and, and when you look at it that way, like that plan that I have, this TV television ad plan, it was not a failure. It was just a success in another way, and I have to be more patient with that success than the instantaneous return that I want. Right. I also learned that, you know what? I need to stick with the rules that I make for myself to live by in marketing or management or whatever it is. And they're there for a reason. Like I made rules, no print advertising. I've made rules, no, no uh, television media, no traditional media, no radio media, right? I mean, those are things that, and I went outside of that and got excited because of some, an opportunity I saw. And that was through experience working with others, and I gave it a try. But it reinforced the fact that that's not for me, not right now, okay? So, so now what I can do is double down on social media and other type of media with click funnels and other things that I'm working on, sales funnels, that, uh, where my money is going to go a, a thousand times farther. And I'll spend a lot less of it and get a better return. Right. And now all the shows that we do for Elder Law Report, for instance, for our, for our Elder Law Firm, mm -hmm. they, uh, I mix in two or three commercials on appropriate spots. So that's how we, that's how we leverage those. Okay. So now I can do that for several years there, right? So, I mean, still using that content. Mm -hmm. Breaking it out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and 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 that's great. I mean, so it, I'm not scared to try new things. But there's the, there's always like two sides of every coin. However, I learned that you know what I ought to listen to the rules I set up for myself because at some point I set them up for a reason based off what I've learned. So there's both of those things, and then you have to weigh those. You know, when you're trying new things. Well, that brings up that quote again. Never, I never lose. I either win or I learn. So only win is just is such a good quote. Absolutely, it is no only winning and learning. So how does that factor into New Year's resolutions? 
I mean, I think it is a good time of year to plan. And everybody, I mean, I think should engage in that. I do. But I mean, finish off those things that really need to be finished off. But as you said, you can't you can't stop everything that you're doing December 31st and start everything new January 1st. No, it kind of feels that way in a way, but you can't. Also, a continuation. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm struggling about whether you know I got his, I got a big thing I could go to tonight. Big blowout party. I don't want to do it. I love being around friends and, and people like that, you know. But uh, I love being around my family too. And I got the kids. Yeah, yeah. I think we're just gonna have a glass. So I think, of I think we're gonna chill. Look at the fireworks around the lake. <coughs> oh, it's gonna be nice. Yeah. That'll be nice. It's like I'll, feel, I'll feel a time better tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> sleep late. I'll sleep late. Wake up rested, rested, and recharged. And, Ready to blast off in the 2018. Yeah. Opportunity to all. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to work with you a lot more this year. Yes. We got away from that this past year. And that's because I bought this building. Well, you had to set priorities with that. I mean, getting in the building was, was a priority. Mm-hmm. It had to be done. So <coughs> that was necessary. And uh, also, we've got um, Rockstar Business we're going to finish up. Yeah. Which is close. So talking about finishing that up, let's, let's finish up Hometown Heroes. Mm-hmm. After we're done with this, I'd like to have a conversation about that. Just finish where we're at. Right. Finish that up. Then where I, cut off, where I cut it off, you know? Yeah. So Hometown Heroes. We'll publish that. I'd like to have that edited and finished by the end of January. Right? The editing process. Yeah. And then Rockstar Business is it's gonna be eighty-five percent, man. Eighty-five percent? For a for a second draft, say. I mean it's still got some work to do. <coughs> Let's say you and I I get, think we can do why that. Why don't we get together and uh, try to finish that up by end of the first quarter? Yeah, that'd be good. And then why don't we start I'd like to, to put out content such that I want a blog piece, of, a blog a week to go out. Mm-hmm. I want um, um, I'm going to send out. Yeah, I was watching the Gary Vee thing this morning. That you know, I'd love to see that. I'll send it to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it was about getting started. It's very good. It's called Getting Started. So Gary Vee, just special production. And I'm going to be contacting everybody that does, has anything to do with what we do, mm-hmm. to publish our articles and content. Right. And their newsletters, and their blogs, on their websites, right? You know, however we can. Link to Hometown Heroes, the book, link to Saving the Farm, link to our content. And we ought to be forging those relationships. Yeah. And just literally ought to be every day. Make it a point to contact 10 new people and then do follow ups at some point. Set aside an hour a day or so. And, and uh, you know, today and tomorrow, I think I'm going to set aside some time to make a list. And I'm going to make a list of, I'm going to make a list of hundreds of companies, if not more. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of companies that are statewide and nationwide. And perhaps in the states where we want to go, so that uh, so we can start getting our content out on those publications. Okay. Sounds good. Systematically start doing that and follow up. That's what we're doing. See, I'll just lay it out there. That's exactly what I'm going to do. First, first of 2018, I'm hitting that hard. Plus, I'm going to film. I'm going to take my content creation to the next level too. All right. Content creation, I think. And I'm trying to think about how to not separate. Getting a lot more micro content now. Right. And, and even combining that in the videos that, uh, you know, from the whole day, much like a Gary Vee, Daily V. But here's the thing. I don't want to separate the law firm from lawyer grip. Okay. I can't. I just don't. I haven't. I have not ever figured out how to separate those aspects of my life. 
Well, it's all business. I mean, it, it, I mean, the, the lawyer Greg stuff is business related. So it's all about running a business as best you can and being in the right frame. The question, mind. all of that comes into the it. question: Do I put out? Do I put out lawyer Greg content on McIntyre Holding Law? Because I want to show that daily grind. I want people to know what we go through and what we do and how serious we are about doing it. Right. I mean, some and of that, and I posed that question to Stephanie this morning. She's my biggest business coach, my wife. She could stand and work in the mirror for me. She watched, I forced her to watch this 12 minute Carrie B. You know, show before, before we got out of bed. I sit over the phone. Like, Greg, do I have to? I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know, you and then she instantly, at the end, she's like, looks at me, she's like, dummy, I've been giving you that advice for years. Like, you ought to be on AARP, you ought to be on American Legion, you ought to be, you know, you ought to be linked with all this stuff. Do that, write the thousands. Yeah. Of emails and DMs, you know, letters and calls. Do that. That's what you should do. That's what I've been telling you. But my thing is with the video content. How to know, how to merge the two, how to show it, and but be sensitive to client information, never reveal any of that, never reveal any clients. I don't even know if people know who my clients are. Right. And yes, yeah, so I, I, I have some other area restrictions that some companies don't, right? some businesses don't, but I'm determined to make it work. And I don't want to turn off potential clients, I don't think. Right? But, but if you think that any business is perfect and runs perfect, you're kidding yourself. You know, yeah. Doritos just doesn't want to show you what goes on the border. Or all the interns working, you know, late. Or, or the, you know, the law firm, the big New York law firms don't want to show you the dungeon where they put all the associates working 90 hours a week. Right? I mean, you know, they get yelled at by the by the uh, senior, you know, junior partners, senior associates, and all. You know, they don't want to show you that that stuff. But that's not real, you know. And I want people to know and be involved in the creation of a firm. I want that. I want to be able to look back at that. I want my kids to be able to look back at that. So you want to develop. I want, a, I want a diary. I want a diary of, of what we did. A new kind of law firm, so to speak, not just one that you normally associate law firms in a specific way in your head. I mean, if, if you're thinking about them, they have a certain feel to them. We are unique. We are unique in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, and traditional in a lot of ways too. Right. However, what I want to do is I want to work with other business people and attorneys also. I love doing what we're doing right now, talking about business, talking about life, the philosophy. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely eat it up. And it fulfills me. You like it too. Mm -hmm. I absolutely. know you do. Absolutely. So I want that to be part of the way I make a living. Okay, at some point. Just well, that's what I'm gonna do is work with people to help them break down their fears and walls and abilities to do these things. As long and as it also do. also benefits that side of the business, then it can work. So I want to do that, number one. And I want to show that and I want to document that. So I can look back at it so others can can share it and so my kids can look back at it, right? I wanna right. I wanna to, to dialogue. I mean, to, to document that. Um, and I also want something that would be attractive to my clients, my potential clients, which we already do shows. We do shows right now, a, public, a more polished show. To say it's polished is, is, is laughable, probably. I mean, it's not polished, but... It is a set show for 20 to 30 minutes about a subject. Well, I suppose that, <coughs> which is elder law related, the difference though is that the majority of your elder law clients 
may not be that interested in how to run a business better, how to be a better leader, that kind of thing. They're interested in their the law issues. They are. So I should be putting is, more. I should be putting more content out. Well, I just need to. Do, but part of. Okay. Okay. So now you're now you are hitting what in my head I'm having trouble with. I want to document the process of what I do. I want to talk about elder law issues. Okay. I want to talk about those, those elder law issues, though, from a business standpoint, are going to be what other elder lawyers are going to be interested in. Yeah, so so I think, I mean, that's true. That's true. So, so I want to talk about my business, about, I want to talk about the content of what I do. I want to put out good information about what I do. <coughs> But I also want to I want to document the tough things too, the crap, the grind. Yeah, a lot of that. I, I did not. So I want to. It, it, is it possible for me to for me to do all that to document the good and bad part of the running the business <laughs> of own, and also put out a lot of good content surrounding elder law and those types of issues? Can I marry those two things? Can it be one show? Could I do one of those a day that I edit out you know, or somebody else edit out at the end of the day and, and puts up? I don't know because you do have a different audience, a different target audience for the other law and then the business. Right. There's a completely different audience. I'm not sure. Are they though? Are they a different audience? <coughs> well, unless they're older people who are interested in starting the business. I don't know. I think just just viewing how a business runs, the good and bad, and me mixing in the content of what I do in elder law, I think is real. That's who I am. It lets people into my world. And there's benefits on the business side for people to watch because you can learn from all the failures that I, that I have, right? Successes and failures, right? Yeah. And oh, that's what Greg's doing over there, right? And I like to learn from others. I'm constantly trying to learn from others. And, uh, and then also, you know, the people that are looking for elder law content, I'm not saying I'm going to stop producing my set shows either. Right. I'm trying, I, I've been trying to wrap my head around this yeah. for a long time. And it's coming together and I'm determined mm-hmm. to go ahead and launch it and get it done. But we'll have to we'll have to put this all down and see what we can come up with. I'm sure there's a way. <coughs> you right. Need some bourbon and honey or something. Sure that might be good. I'm sure there's a way of doing it, but I don't know if it's fully able to integrate. I'm not convinced. Put it that way. <laughs> Be wrong. <laughs> we just gotta figure it out. I'm wrong nine out of ten times. <laughs> but there's a lot, you know, but you're never fully wrong or, 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 or always right, right? So there's a little bit of wrong and right in every every thought there. Yeah, as long as you're learning from it, you're right. You can't you can't fail if you're learning. You try some so anyway, those are some of my goals for the year. I said I haven't unveiled the secret sauce. We've got a lot of other stuff we're working on, right? So now we're doing, and I think you and I are going to have a lot of time to work together a lot more this year. I, in my email, I said, if you, to, if you wanted to come on full time with me, this is my year. Okay? Okay? Here, I would shake your hand, but uh, I, don't, I don't want to. No, I, I, I get it. I'll be. There you go. Happy 2018. Happy 2018. Happy, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. And, uh, um, Gary, I need to work. A couple thoughts on some people I'd like to work with out there. Gary needs one. I think, I mean, Elder Council also. Mm-hmm. I need to get more involved there, right? Kraus Financial. You know what? I gotta write these things down. I am, I'm already started all this, okay?
I just work with people on a regular basis. And we develop these relationships. I don't think we take the time. I don't take, I haven't taken the time to step back and get perspective. That's another thing I want to build in my year. Is that time to step back and get perspective and think about how to, what is my life made up of right now? And all these people, how can we do better together? Right. Right. I mean, I have, I'm very blessed. We have the pieces right here from exactly where we live <coughs> to write, to, to, to run a publishing company, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. Put out multiple books per year. Yeah. Video, media, media empire. And, and we have these connections all over the country, the world. That we can utilize and leverage, we should be yeah. more, and and that's what we're going to work on doing. So, I hope that your 2018 is a continuation of your great 2017, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to make mine. And hey, we've written uh, books, Law- Rockstar Lawyer, which sounds like it's for lawyers, but if you listen to this show. <laughs> You can tell that uh, that's my day job. I mean, and many businesses have the same parts, customer service, sales, marketing, operations, finance, management. It's no different than our office. And any any growing business um, is very similar. And lawyers can be entrepreneurs too. So Absolutely. So uh, if you're interested in the content, go buy the book. Uh, Leave us some comments. Give us some good reviews on the podcast, The Rockstar Project, which is on Buzzsprout, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play. And uh, we'll come at you. What do you want to do? You want to try to do one week, once a week? Yeah, absolutely. Get a crank back up once a week? Yeah. Robert and I are going to do once a week this year podcast and uh and we'll see where it goes peace